Welcome everyone. Today, we're going to design a boss fight. This boss has some cool mechanics and I wanted to show how I go about setting these fights up. We'll cover coming up with the concept and design, setting up the effects, programming, and of course, playtesting and bug fixes. Let's get started. When thinking about ideas for a particular boss, I like to see how it looks walking around its home area. This boss is going to be found inside of a rock quarry. So initially looking at him, I thought it would be cool to have him tunneling around and it kind of fits with his area. He also looks like he would have a little venom to him. It's important to look at the features of each boss and see what makes them unique in certain ways. I asked myself some general questions about all the bosses I make. How would he protect himself? What would be the nature of his attacks? How would he use the environment to his advantage? What kind of things would he eat? Where does he like to take a sh For creating the blueprint, I like to map everything out. Drawing up the battle arena and how the boss will move about it. It gives me a good overview of what types of things I'll need to create for the scene. Making a list of all the abilities, their different parts, and what kind of effects will be needed. This really helps streamline the process and it keeps me from bouncing around going back and forth. Once the plan was set, I passed it over to my head of gameplay design and waited. Once I was given the green light, I got to work. The first item on the list was making the battlefield. I like to block out the areas that won't be part of the movable area with cubes. This gives me a good vision for the scale and what boundaries for placing objects. It also helps determine tunneling locations for the boss. I cover the outside of the battlefield with terrain features that try and match with the surroundings of the home area of where the boss can be found. I cover the area as close as I can to the edges to try and give the player a good understanding of the boundaries in a more natural looking way. The breakable rocks for now are placed somewhat random, but I'll tune these later. These will be invaluable during the fight because they can block one of the boss's direct attacks. Positioning units around these will be advantageous. The first effect was the boss diving into the ground. This needed to have an image that gave off the illusion as well as the smoke and rubble effect. It took a bit of playing around with the particle system to get certain effects to act the way I needed them to, but after some time I was able to get something I was happy with. Here it is in the final form. The next effect was the boss moving underground. This one was a lot easier to make because I just used the same rubble and smoke effect from the last one. I did have to play with the values a bit and change the smoke and rubble to be a constant instead of a single burst. Here it is in its final form. The acid orb was a fun effect to make. Because it was going to act almost like a basketball shot, I knew having a tail coming off of it would make the effect look a lot better. I added a sphere object as the main part and gave it a green glowing material. Next was adding the pool of poison that was going to be left on the ground. This pool will block off potential paths and will punish any wildkin that tries to walk through them, making the battlefield ever changing on where it was safe to stand. Here is the final combination of the orb and its poison pool. The final effect was the boss shooting spikes. I tried to look for something I could use for a spike, but after not finding anything, I knew I had to make it myself. Opening up Blender, I started to create my masterpiece. It's been a little bit since I've used Blender, but I was able to make something that was actually acceptable. Popping it over into Unity, I gave it a nice texture and started finishing the effect. Added the tail, colored it black and gray, and I was actually pretty happy with the way this effect turned out. Once again, starting off with the tunneling ability, this one had a good range of problems. From improper placement of the image to the boss just not wanting to come up once he reached his location. When I finally had him tunneling the right way, I wanted to create rocks that fly into the air and land around the battlefield. I set up the rocks and added some functionality to get them to fly in the air before crashing down. This took a lot of testing. At first it was looking like the Hulk threw it. 
I had to spend a decent amount of time just tuning the values so that they would at least be somewhat random, but would still land somewhere on the battlefield. It was a lot of back and forth. Working on setting up the damage system for when he was underground traveling was actually the easiest part. I set up a collider on the effect itself, and if it runs into a unit, it just deals damage through the unit's damage system. It's rare to get something to work on the first go, but this was a pretty easy one to set up. Finally content with the spread of the rocks, I started to work on the next ability, the acid orbs. Using the same code I did with the boulder, I still wasn't that happy with the way the poison would spread around the battlefield. I changed it so that before he did any ability, he would face to the center of the map. This way, whatever ability he did do would at least be targeting the proper direction. Once I could get him to shoot consistently into the center, I added some randomness to the left and the right, and a small change to the distance values. This gave the perfect coverage I was looking for. It should be somewhat random, but a little bit accurate to at least have all the spells end up on the battlefield for the most part. The ground poison was another easy one to set up. If a wildkin walks in, it'll take damage and become poisoned. Each time it's the boss's turn, he just re-triggers these colliders in case there's any wildkin still standing in them. Finally, we have the spike attack. This one should have been a lot easier than it actually was and took a bit longer than I wanted it to, but Eventually, I was getting him to hit his targets. This boss will rotate between his three attacks, but I wanted one that would at least put pressure on your wildkin. It's a physical type attack, so you have to really think about this when selecting your team. Finally, with everything built and working, it was time to move on to the playtest, and I'm going to assemble the perfect team for this one. What's up guys, before we get into the boss fight, I actually don't have a name for this boss, so if you have some good ideas, put it down in the comments. If I like it, I'll pick it. Second, hit the like and subscribe, it really helps me out. You guys have been amazing in all your support and advice, I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome, thank you. The first wildkin on my team is going to be my support fighter. I talented him mainly into vitality. This will give him a large enough energy pool so that I can keep my team healed without having to rest him too many turns. My second pick is going to be a tanky boy. I talented him with a good amount of armor and stamina. This increases his health pool by a good amount and allows him to hopefully block a lot of the direct damaging abilities. The final pick is going to be my main damage dealer. He's talented in almost full spell damage. I gave him a bit into vitality for a larger energy pool to keep him attacking most turns. Starting out, the boss did need a little bit of tuning. His direct damage attack was still chewing apart my tank. Even though I'm using tier 2 wildkin at probably the lowest levels you would want to bring for this fight, it still needed a slight damage adjustment. Because I knew the boss's movements and attack rotation, I did create him. My plan was to use my support fighter initially to keep the boss's spell defense lowered. This would allow my spell caster to deal the most amount of damage each turn. I positioned my tank and damage dealer to be in the best spot for when the boss tunneled to his first location to maximize the amount of turns I would have there. I used this free turn to buff up my damage dealer's special attack and my tank's armor even further. Once the boss finally moved to his first tunnel location, I positioned my support behind a rock to block one of the spikes and be close for when it needed to heal my tank. I moved my tank in front of the boss, but blocking the main damage dealer. This way my spellcaster could freely attack the boss and my tank would take the shot that would be directed at him. My spellcaster is tuned for max damage, so he can't take too much punishment and needed to stay as healthy as he could just in case he took a rock or a poison bolt. Using my support to keep my tank nice and healthy, I followed this strategy for each of the boss's tunneling locations. The boss will still need a bit of tuning, but again, I'm using the wildkin that are barely at the level for this boss, but with good strategy, the boss should be defeatable, only getting easier as your wild can get stronger. It still came down to the wire at the end, with all my units pretty much just barely hanging on. The tank did take one for the team though, and I was able to deliver one final attack to finish the boss off. So let's talk about what's next. First, you guys can wishlist wildkins. I don't have a release date in mind currently, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but there'll be a link down below. 
This game has taken a large amount of planning and tons of code, but I'm finally caught up with all the systems. From the talent system, the battle system, boss structure, NPCs, inventory, farming, crafting, real-time item spawning, and keeping track of all the save data. It's been a lot of work, but all of these systems are in place and working. So going forward, my focus is going to be solely on improving the visuals in the game. A lot of you mentioned the art, and I do agree. I'm going to be changing all the UIs to a more final form, and changing a lot of the environment art and the UI images. I'm going to remove the rest of the placeholders and try to get a more cohesive look just between everything all around. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you next time.